sometimes it starts out as just a job to put a little extra uh, money in the pocket. But once you realize or have the realization that this is a very important skill set and a need, you can grow that job into a wonderful career. You're listening to The Successful Bookkeeper with your host, Michael Palmer. Listen each week as inspiring guests share their secrets of success to help you increase your confidence, work smarter, and build a business you love. This episode of The Successful Bookkeeper is brought to you by purebookkeeping.com, the proven system to grow your bookkeeping business. Welcome back to the Successful Bookkeeper Podcast. I am your host, Michael Palmer, and today's show is going to be a special one. In October 2020, at the Accounting and Finance Show USA virtual conference, I did a live podcast with the co-founder and managing director of Profit First Professionals, Ron Saharan, and Ian Murphy, who is the owner of Moxie Bookkeeping and a Profit First Professional herself. Our chat about how making your clients profitable first can drive more business for you was valuable, and I wanted to share that conversation with you today. All right, let's get to it. Here's that conversation now. Hello, and welcome to the live podcast where we'll be talking about how making your clients profitable first will drive more business for you. As all the panelists turn their cameras on, I will introduce them. Um, This will be a live discussion with Michael Palmer, CEO of Pure Bookkeeping and host of the Successful Bookkeeping podcast. Ian Price Murphy, owner of Moxie Bookkeeping, and Ron Sahayan, co-founder of Profit First Professionals. Don't forget to submit your questions in the question box. All of our panelists will be available to answer these during the session. And please keep in mind that you will need to remain attentive throughout this session in order to receive your CPE credits. Um, We'll be releasing polls periodically during the session, and you must respond to each poll in order to receive your credit. All right, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you very much. Beautiful. And welcome, everyone, to a live edition of the Successful Bookkeeper Podcast. And I am so excited about this episode today because I've got two amazing guests that are going to help us help you help your clients see more profit in their business. Now, are we going to have people naming their children after you? Absolutely. Because when you put more money in their jeans, that's exactly what happens. Now, before we get to introducing these two wonderful guests in a much deeper way, let us first hear from you, the listener right now. We'd love for you to put in the chat, what are you looking to get out of this session today? Why did this session actually catch your attention? And we want to make sure that you let us know so that we can make sure we deliver that to you today. Okay. So while you're doing that, we're going to introduce, first, we're going to start with our lovely Ian Price Murphy. Ian, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, How'd you end up doing what you're doing today? Well, uh, I found out after graduating from liberal arts that uh, bookkeeping was my only marketable proficiency. (laughs) So I sort of fell into it, um, not on purpose at all, but I really loved the work. I had actually thought growing up that I wanted to be a teacher until I actually taught. Um, And I was able to really find that spirit of giving and empowerment through education in my bookkeeping work. Wow. So what I'd love to know, um, uh, and this we'll get to this in, in just a sec, but I always do this because I don't normally have two guests on, is that I dive in with questions. And so hold that thought, Michael uh, and Ian, while I get Ron to uh, introduce himself. Tell us, Ron, how the heck did you get to be doing what you're doing today? It was basically over a bottle of wine, Michael. <laughs> okay. I love that. <laughs> Tell me more. Let's have some. I've got water. 
Yeah, there you go. So uh, my business partner, his name is Mike Michalowicz. He authors several successful business books. Uh, one of his uh, most successful is called Profit First. It's a um, cash flow methodology. And so in 2014, Mike and I got together to create Profit First Professionals. Thank you, Ian, uh, to support the teachings in the book, to certify accountants, bookkeepers, and financial coaches in this methodology. Beautiful. Well, listen, jumping back to you, Ian, you're a liberal arts uh, major. You, you realized you didn't want to teach, so you, you got into teaching business owners how to have better finances and, and take care of their, their business in a better way. I'd love to know, what was that pivot point for you when you made that decision? I think it wasn't so much a making a decision as a discovery that, that um the work that I was doing because I was good at it, which was bookkeeping, actually aligned with that track, uh, you know, and, and I found my why in it. So I could have just stayed being a, you know, back office, closed door, data entry bookkeeper or CPA and been very successful at that. But that wasn't the piece that really drove me. Um, and so it was figuring out for me that, like, that was what... Um, really made me feel fulfilled in my work. And like I was, you know, paying my rent to be on the planet was, was that empowerment of, you know, and my mom worked for her, my, herself and my dad's a musician and my sister works for herself. So I also just feel like, you know, to me, small business uh, has a deep place in my heart. And I feel like strong small business makes strong communities. And that's also very in line with my values. Mm, we love that. We love that. Uh, and it's, it's so amazing when you, when you really think about it, you're, every single one of us and also every single listener, watcher right now, if you stuck your hand out, you would, it would be very difficult not to you know, touch the shoulder of a, a, either a current, uh, past, or future small business, small, medium-sized business owner. I mean, there, if I think about my family, there's almost nobody in my family that hasn't either tried to run a business, uh, have, is in business, or is thinking about being in business. And guess what? The sad thing is there's not that many successful ones in that story. And it really, I think, leads back to bookkeepers like yourself. If they would have had the ones that tried and failed, likely would have been more successful had they had a bookkeeper like you, Ian, where you're passionate about helping business owners be more successful because you're doing, you have a mission, you have a why, you're doing it to help people like your mother. And that's the type of book. So for those, if, but goodness sakes, we have a small business owner listening. This is the type of bookkeeper that you want to be hiring. Someone who actually is passionate about what they're doing and has a big why to help people like you. Well, most of our listeners today are people like you, Ian. That's why they're on the show. They're bookkeepers, accountants, uh, or want to start bookkeeping businesses or accounting businesses. So we got the right people on the call today. Um, and so, Ron, you know, hearing that, tell us a little bit about your and Mike's why for why you're doing your business. Yeah, so um, I'm a son of an entrepreneur, and it's not easy being um, a child of an entrepreneur. Statistically speaking, most businesses are going to fail, right? Most businesses, startups aren't going to make it to year one, let alone year five, let alone year 10. And so, you know, one of the things is I've seen the ups and I've seen the downs. And if businesses, if small businesses are able to pay themselves first, maybe a little bit more, two, they're going to have money for Uncle Sam, Three, a profit. Even if that profit is three, three point five percent, small businesses can pay down their debt. They can celebrate the health of the company, or they can hire. If small, more small businesses could have hired back then, well, maybe my father had a job. Maybe he had a better job. Maybe we didn't live the way that we lived. And you know, that's the chip on my shoulder. That's why I'm doing this, to eradicate entrepreneurial poverty. If we can really help small businesses get this down right, well, then they can hire when they can hire people have jobs. And when people have jobs, it relieves a lot of the stress from the home life. Mm, absolutely love that. And we've got, we've got your army here on this call, potential army of people who can do that inside of small, medium-sized businesses. And I, I also think, you know, when you think about a business, when, when if a business is struggling to, to earn profit for the business owner, you know, eventually that's going to peter out. They're going to lose interest. 
And if they spend a long, long percentage of the time in business doing that, you know, they don't get to innovation, right? It's like, they don't get to like where they really turn the magic on in their business. And that's where, you know, people come alive in businesses, right? When they're working on things that matter and they're working on new and cutting edge things and constantly doing that, that's when the business really starts to roll. If we had more businesses like that, well, geez, that would create tons of jobs. It would create tons of innovation in, in our countries. And it would be literally lifeblood flowing into our communities. So, you know, we're definitely on the right call. We've got the right people to be talking about helping business owners show more profit in their businesses. And now just looking at the chat here, this is what our listener and watchers have come to talk about, Ron and Ian. I want to add value to my clients by giving great service and expertise want info somehow related to public sector. And I'm going to bring back, make sure we, we, we accomplish that in this, uh, in this episode today. Uh, someone has said they love the podcast. They love Profit First. They're happy to be joining this. Thank you very much. We love hearing that. And as well, as well I'm sure you, uh, Ron and Ian do as well. And getting more clients and how to develop those relationships. So uh, one other comment as well. Now, unfortunately, I don't see who makes these contents or I'd give you a shout out because... Thank you for already being engaged and giving us some, uh, some of your thoughts. I've heard business owners in the past grow their businesses, and now I need to make it part of my service in my practice. I think you're on the right track. So let's talk about that. That's a great uh, segue into, look, when bookkeepers launch a business, their first thought isn't likely to help their clients make a lot of money right? They're probably looking to be profitable for themselves first in order to pay the bills. But what can those bookkeepers do to shift that mindset? Let's throw that one over to you, Ron, and then Ian. Sure. Um, great, great question. The first thing is to realize that a bookkeeping um, company, well, bookkeeping can become a company. It doesn't have to, it's not just a job. It, it Sometimes it starts out as just a job to put a, a little extra uh, money in the pocket. But once you realize or have the realization that this is a very important skill set and a need, you can grow that job into a wonderful career. And in order to do that, you know, you're going to need the systems. Okay, pure bookkeeping systems. You're going to need to differentiate yourself from service and in marketing, and you're going to have to be a little bit more consultative. And so, what what are you going to consult about, right? And so, one one of the things, of course, is being a profit strategist and a cash flow expert. So, if you're looking to, you know, really get out there, change that mindset, realizing that, you know, bookkeeping isn't just a job. It can really be a career and it can really be a company where you can employ a lot of people that have great careers. Well said, well said. And what do you have to say about that? I mean, I think that's exactly right, right? I, I grew from being a freelancer to now owning a business of 10 people. Um, and for, you know, for me, I sort of knew early on that I needed to differentiate myself partly because when I was done with the reconciliations of the books and I'd hand the reports to the owner, they either, you know, didn't know what they were looking at. So they would just throw them away essentially, or they didn't know what to do about them. And that question always bothered me because, you know, technically it's not bookkeeping, but I felt like, well, if I can't direct them towards that answer, even if I don't have it, what am I doing here? And I actually had certified as a business coach on my way towards that. But again, I, you know, I'm a numbers girl. I don't want to talk about marketing. <laughs> and, um, and so when I came across Profit First, which I actually discovered through a client of mine who said, you have to read this book. And I read it and I thought, well, that's foolish. Why wouldn't I just look at my reports? You know, and, and then I had to like stop myself and be like, because they're not a bookkeeper. They're not looking at the reports. They need a better system. And that it gave me the exact um, financial coaching skills that I needed to really be able to serve my clients in a way that felt really good to me, absolutely differentiated me from, the, from my competition, filled that niche, you know, in a very supported way um, and really helped me, you know. So I always start by breaking things. So before I joined Profit First, we tried Profit First in our business. And again, you know, I felt like I was, pretty on top of things and was taking home, you know, a reasonable salary, but simply by getting the clarity about what I was intending to do with my profit, I doubled my take-home pay. And that was all of the proof that I needed. And I was 100% in, you know, and being able to work with my clients 
uh, and say, this is what I did for myself. I think we can do something very similar for you has just been a no brainer. It, you know, it, I hate to use the term a win-win, but it is, you know. It we helps. like win-win. <laughs> I like win-win. I like, I like the win, idea. win, 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 <laughs> right? Yes. But it was this, it was this idea that like my business was growing and I was becoming more profitable as I was doing that with my clients. And that's, Uh, that's what it's all about. You know, um, profit first isn't about, you know, sharing the book, buying the book, becoming a member. It's really about, you know, having the tools available and the experience, experiencing profit first in your own business. And so one of the things is, is when we're talking to accountants and bookkeepers and we're coaching them, it's not about what conference you're going to. It's not about what book you're going, you're reading at this particular time. It's because business owners like me, I'm not an accountant or a bookkeeper. I put accountants and bookkeepers on a pedestal. I want to know what are you doing in your business to live that lifestyle, regardless of how successful it's actually going. We think all accountants are, you know, doing great. All bookkeeping firms are doing great. All financial service firms are doing great. I want to know what you're doing in your business. And so by being a profit first professional, you can, Ian can simply say, hey, I've noticed that you haven't been paying yourself consistently. Would you be interested in knowing the methodology I use in my own business to pay myself consistently, to have money for the tax man, to reduce expenses, and to have a profit? That's what I want to know. That's what your customers want to know. You make it sound so easy. And it is that easy to have that kind of conversation. And who would not want to have a further conversation after hearing that? So I love that. You know, one thing, Mike Michalowicz wrote the book Profit First. It was the, the it's the, the cornerstone, I guess, uh, of your, of your business, Ron. I love when people write books that they nearly don't need the author anymore. The book is that good that literally when you read the book, when business owners read the book, they can start to implement, they can, they can take it and make it and make it their own. And then they love it so much. They come to you to actually master it, you know, and that's the thing It's like, you could give somebody a book and have them read it and be like, well, I kind of get the idea, but I didn't get anything out of it. I didn't actually take any action. I have not met one person who's read profit first, who has not improved their cash income, their, sorry, their profit and money that they put in their jeans. I've not met one person who has not told me that they've been able to do that after reading that book. That to me is a fantastic best-selling, should be best-selling New York Times best-selling book because of the fact that what it's doing. And so Ian, you're an example of that. You read the book and then you started implementing things. You wanted to get in and master it. And now you're able to go to business owners and say, look look at me. Look what I've done to my business. Look at the profit that I'm making. I absolutely love that, Ron. You're muted, Ron. Oops, sorry about that. Don't hold back any of your goodness here, Ron, please. We want the gold. We got to hear the gold. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, re- reading the book, it, it, it's... it's um, Tacit knowledge. You you want you know it's I'm sorry it's it's explicit knowledge. It's information that you can gain from reading anything. But it's until you really start doing it that you understand the nuances and you get that tactic experience. And so you know one of the things we say is everybody can start with profit first. It is so conceptually simple. All you're doing is taking a predetermined percentage of money and putting it in a bank account for a specific purpose. Grandmother's envelope budgeting, if you will. Okay. But it, it's, it's how you go about that. How do you handle an S corp versus an LLC? How do you handle distributions versus owner's pay? How do you handle all these nuances? And so this is stuff that you really can't gleam from a book. And so that's why there's a comprehensive certification process, but I don't want to get into all of that. There's plenty of other other programs that are out there that are great. It doesn't have to be profit first, but it has to be something different. Different Mm. is better, right? Mm. And so whether it's profit first, whether it's forecasting, whether it's, you know, expense management, what are you doing other than what everybody else is doing? And how are you differentiating yourself to the outside world? Okay, because people are, you know, one of the things, it's easy to land a business on a referral. It's very difficult to unseat the incumbent. 
That's what we're looking to do. We want to unseat the incumbent. We want those businesses that are better than what we may have. So how are you going to attract them? Being Mm. on time, being in the cloud, being accurate. I expect that from my accountant and my bookkeeper. But what do you really do to make a difference in my life? Mm. Remarkable. And uh, knowing knowing many profit first professionals, this is this is it's a proven a proven differentiator because of the success and and results that they actually create in their business. Um, which is why we love having the conversation with anyone from Profit First on our podcast. And so, a couple of questions. Big fan of Profit First, wondering if the system is considering an update shift from opening multiple bank accounts to opening multiple fintech bank accounts, i.e. QuickBooks Cash, et cetera, similar to the shift PF made from old envelope system to current, maybe a Profit First 2.0. Interesting question. Great question. And you know, the, the reason why we use bank accounts is because it's for the, it's the system designed for the entrepreneur, made by entrepreneurs. And so anytime we're trying to do something on a spreadsheet in QuickBooks or um, a fintech bank accounts, there's going to be human error involved. It's also not as real time. And so can you use these systems and other systems as a hack? Absolutely. Absolutely. But are you going to get the true experience of it? Are you going to have the guardrails in place? Are your customers going to be looking at the totality of all the money on the spreadsheet in the different bank accounts and make the assumption that there's a lot of money for another unintended purpose? And the example that I share is I was working with a $15 million company and they were implementing Profit First and they had probably had about seven, eight, maybe nine different bank accounts. And these are just holding accounts. You're not writing checks into them. You're not collecting income to them. They're just like a sales tax account, if you will. Okay. And so they changed controllers. The controller said, all these bank accounts, this is ridiculous. You don't need all these bank accounts. I don't want all these bank accounts. And so what he did, he put it all on an Excel or he did it in QuickBooks. I'm not sure exactly what it was. And so he had a marketing account. He had a legal account. He had a, um, a new employee account. He had a core capital account. And so one of the marketing guy goes to the controller, hey, listen, I'm going to be, you know, looking to spend money. I'm going to be going and making investments here. Do I have enough money? money to be able to do this. This is what I'm looking to spend. The controller looked at his list, looked at the bottom line and said, yeah, you've got plenty of money to do it. Great. Went ahead and did it. Next two weeks later, the president of the company said, hey, I'm looking to double down on this opportunity. I have a core capital account. I want to invest it in a new manufacturing line. Okay. I should have X amount of money in there. You don't. What do you mean I don't? The only thing that we could be, used, what do you mean? Well, the marketing, okay, needed a little bit extra. So we have this, all, we had the total. And so I wasn't sure that you were going to be spending the money. I think we would be able to make it up on the next receivables that we had. The business owner was furious, furious. So anytime, you, you know, you have somebody that's not really understanding the behavioral aspects of it, to, to most accountants and bookkeepers, yeah, it makes sense to do it. Makes sense to do it on here. Unfortunately, to the entrepreneur, we wake up every morning, log in to our bank accounts and make business decisions as to whether or not we could spend without realizing that some of that money needs to go to profit, go to taxes, go to owner's pay, go to a vault. We've been talking about having three to six months of core capital at home and in the business Forever. So while I understand the simplicity and the want to hack the system, I don't subscribe to it. We have 20 bank accounts here in Profit First. I have a cash call with my bookkeeper every other Thursday at 10 a.m. And you want to make more money as a bookkeeper accountant? How about that frequency of conversation? I pay for that frequency of conversation. I am scheduled during my, on, when I went with our firm, they said, okay, Ron, based upon your package, we're going to be having monthly conversations. 
Well, what if I want this package? Well, that package is a silver package. That's quarterly conversations. Well, what, what if I want more? What are you talking about? Well, what if I wanted to talk to you like on this on a regular basis? Well, that's going to probably be a little bit more because it's not about what they're doing behind the scenes. It's being a sounding board and being able for them to make sure I have the clarity on what I need. And so it really is comes down to having relief that you have a system. Okay. Empowerment that you're executing the system and then focus on growing your job. My concern with having electronic uh, bank accounts doing this is that it could lead to, you know, misuse, misunderstanding, stealing from Peter to justify Paul, and it's not live. It's not real time. That's right. You know, I, I think it's interesting that the way you've answered that, Ron, and I think uh, I'd love to hear from Ian because here's the, here's the big problem in this whole formula. It's the business owner right? It's money and a business owner. And then how do we manage that money coming in with the business owner? Because business owners, typically when they're starting a business, they're human beings, right? And they stay human beings. And so there's a whole bunch of human, human elements to, whilst you can read the book, as I said, everybody's going to get a benefit from reading the book, but making it really sing the music we want it to sing requires intervention. And so, Ian, this is where you come in. You're taking these philosophies. You're working with the business owner and you are on mute. So I want to make sure you take it off, yourself off mute. How do you then take the system? Tell us a little bit about where you play the role in helping these business owners actually realize profit. Some of what Ron has already told us. Well, I think it's important to um, acknowledge that my niche is creatives. So it is people who are generally loath to deal with the money stuff. And that uh, often comes with a lot of mindset issues as well. So part of what I like about bringing profit first to creatives is that it sort of takes the feelings about money out of the question. It's just, well, here's the number. What, and we just put this here. Uh, you know, and, and I get a lot of people saying, well, can you sit with me on the phone while I do that? Of course, of course I will. But again, it's just an opportunity for me to really um, meet my clients where they're at rather than saying, here's a system you know, that requires you to be comfortable with spreadsheets even. Um, and a sales call that I had I think just yesterday where a woman said, well, I think we're, you know, we're just going to, we do this in spreadsheets right now. So we're just going to continue. And I was like, that's fine with me. You know, if you want to do that, uh, my, uh, my question to you would be just clock how much time you're spending on entering that data into Excel and how many times the formula error comes up and, you know, just like how much time are you spending on that? Because I can tell you that implementing profit first takes a little bit of time up front, but it is basically maintenance free. You know, and, and because we, you know, even though we are a bookkeeping service, we work with a lot of people who do their own bookkeeping or who have a VA doing some of the data entry that, you know, that my question is, is, or the question that I get asked, I mean, is, you know, is this going to really add a lot to my bookkeeping bill? And the answer is no, it's a few extra transfers. It's not 12 new accounts to reconcile. So it's not this whole huge, big thing, um, you know, but if you feel like you've got a better solution, Go for it. Call me when you figure out how much better that what I'm offering you really is. Well, I mean, it's, it gets back to doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting a different result. I mean, yeah. you know, we, we've been teaching every business owner sales minus expenses equal profit, right? I mean, that's how I grew up. It's structurally correct, behaviorally wrong. What comes first gets measured. What comes last is an afterthought. If I pick Michael last for kickball, He's probably not that good. <laughs> so behaviorally, I'm He's saying profit shoes. isn't that good. And so when you simply just change that formula, sales minus profit equal expenses, that's a mindset change. But keep in mind that P is not just representative of a profit. It's representative of paying yourself. It's representative of having tax. Yes, profit. But what about purpose? Stability. What about security? right? Let's architect the cash flow in our customers' businesses to not only eliminate the pains, but to achieve the wants. Absolutely. And what resistance do you get from 
people you're trying to, maybe new client has come on board. What, what resistance do you see from people that are adopting this type of a system? I mean, the resistance is all up front. As soon as I go, well, let's just start with one, you know, you already have a savings account. Let's just start with putting 1% in there and just see how it goes. Um, that often will break through it. The, my other favorite thing to do uh, is to say, let's look at last year's numbers and uh, apply the profit first percentages to that. And l- hey, look, you could have paid yourself $100,000 last year if you only got your expenses under control. And that's often a eye opener, especially for people that are paying themselves closer to like 40 to 60, you know, the money's there. They just don't know how to be intentional about it. And so, mm-hmm. you know, those two, those two answers to the, I think, you know, oh, it seems so complicated and why so many bank accounts and won't this add to my bookkeeping bill? You know, the answer is generally like, that's really not the it's issue. It's inconsequential. Right. You know, uh, the, the questions I ask back are, you know, how would you like to sleep better at night? How would you like to not wake up at 2.30 in the morning wondering, oh, oh, I just remembered about a bill that's coming up. You know, it's covered. It's there. If you want to check your bank account in the middle of the night, go for it. It will put you back to sleep knowing yeah. that everything is handled. And like, that is invaluable to my clients. Well, I mean, it's, it's change. It's change, right? We, we're, we're comfortable knowing what we're doing. It's uncomfortable to do something slightly different, even though that change could be profound, could have so much. So we all know that we should eat better, but it's hard to do. Right. And so I, I was at um, my daughter's cheerleading um, last night and, you know, one of my buddies uh, was talking to me, he's a corporate guy and he's like, you know, why wouldn't somebody implement profit first? They're afraid. They're afraid. They're scared. Right. And so that's where being a resource and being, you know, consultative to your customers and saying, listen, I understand how you feel. When I first talked to Ron, he told me, an accountant and bookkeeper, that I got to open up all these bank accounts. I'm like, no, Ron, you know, listen, I'm a multi-million dollar accounting firm. You know, no, I'm not going to. Well, yeah, you got to, okay? Because you have to walk the talk. Anybody who's not walking the talk is not integral, in my opinion, okay? So, you know, that's where you are end up by walking the talk, implementing the experiencing. Like what Ian said, you want to be on the same side of the table as your customer. You don't want to be on the, uh, in the ivory tower saying, okay, here are your finances. Here's this, here's this. It's like, come on, man. We're, you know, like cash flow is king right now. It's always been king, but when are we going to learn to implement a system? That's what profit first is. It's a system. We have marketing systems, hiring systems, onboarding systems, what is your cash flow system? What is the system that you implement in your customers' businesses that are going to pay them first, have money for Uncle Sam, and a profit? Whenever I ask a business owner if their accountant provides them that, they say, they don't know. They just say, sell, 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 and manage your expenses and whatever you have left over. That's your profit. That's your pay. Mm. That's right. And that's typically how it's done. And it doesn't go, it doesn't go that well. When there's a system, anytime there's a system introduced, it creates new behaviors, new expectations, and new outcomes, right? And, uh, and speaking of systems, there is a question that I want to tackle, a couple of questions before we get back to this dialogue. Uh, cash flow forecasting, recommended tool, tool for cash flow forecasting. Do you have anything to say about that before I launch into my thing? <laughs> you, you, you got I it, I think, Ian. Ian, that, Ian, that's your thing. <laughs> Let's hear it. Uh, I think, you know, I don't have a favorite forecasting tool because I use profit first. And so I already know what my recurring income is. I already, my business, we do a lot of recurring billing. We charge in the first, you know, couple of days of the month. So I expect to see 80% of my income by the 15th of the month. And I know what that number is because we have a target. We have a one number target. Once we pass that number, great, we're good. If we haven't, then I know immediately in that moment to check in with my office and say, what happened? You know, are we working less hours? Did we lose a client? 
uh, this happened a couple of months ago, turned out that some of the invoices just didn't send out of our software, got it fixed right away. So I have a very reliable feeling about what the cash flow forecasting should look like, not just for my own business, but for all of the businesses I work with by simply working backwards. Well, how much do you want to take home? Great. What's the percentage that, that, that's the target for you of your overall number? Now we know what your overall number needs to be. You know, how do you tend to earn that money? Is it, you know, a deposit that's supposed to last for six months? Okay, great. Let's do a drip account. But, but for me, Profit First literally replaced cash forecasting in a way that for the clients that I work with felt like it was more accurate. One of the big pushbacks that I always get on creating a budget with people is they say, well, you, you need to make this for me. And they go, I can't make it for you. I don't know what your numbers are. I know what last year was, but I don't know what you're planning to do this year, what you're trying differently, what your targets are. Is that realistic? Like I can have that conversation with you, but I can't fill that number in for you. You as the business owner have to do that. But with Profit First, I actually can say, here's the target. You know, let's look at where we're going and then let's do, let's, every time you do your allocations, you know, as frequently as that is, some people do it weekly, some people do it bi-monthly, you should know, am I on track or not? And that should allow you to immediately take action with your marketing, with your HR staff, with, you know, with your staff to, to make that change immediately so that forecasting becomes essentially irrelevant in my opinion. That's not going to be true for every Beautiful. company size, but that's my Beautiful. Thing. Well, yeah. you know, there's a there's the game bowling, and when you have when you're bowling and you hit all the pins down, that's a strike, right? You have a strike. So I think when we could say a strike system would be one that knocks all the pins down with one ball, and so we've got not only are we putting more profit, we have clarity, we're also getting forecasting handled by actually having the system and having a process. That, that actually removes the requirement to have a system for cash flow forecasting. Now, I'm sure there's some businesses that would need that or whatnot, but that's the power of systems. Ron, what do you have to say about that? Yeah, I think forecasting can be used in conjunction with profit first, right? And so, you know, one of the things, Ian's talking about reverse engineering based upon what the top line needs to be versus what, compared to what the owners pay in various different percentages are. That's great, okay? Now, you could do forecasting as well. So if you do your, for, that's mostly on accrual, right? To just see what's possibly coming on in. I'm, I'm a more of a cash system guy, Okay, but if you're doing forecasting, forecasting is great in conjunction with profit first because they can run parallel. Mm. By having profit first, it's a live cash flow system. So as you as you forecast it, you can be riding that bike and looking at your forecast and making sure you're running parallel to it. When if you don't have the profit first, what happens is most most of the time you're going to get your finances or your data. It's going to be a, a month to three months old. Right, you already that all, that shit already happened. Excuse my French, right? But this is by profit first. It's live, and if you're in conjunction with your cash flow forecasting, you got it going on, mm. right? But if you only have the cash flow forecasting and you're getting your reports and you're off a month later, that small deviation over a, a couple of months is going to be a big variable. It's going to upset the apple cart. So. You know, I'm all for forecasting, but utilizing it as a tool to where you want to get, that's the target. Okay, let's make sure we're actually getting there on a real-time basis versus, oh no, we're off 50,000. What are we going to do? How are we going to make that back up? Because everybody gets has a plan. And like Mike Tyson says, until you get punched in the nose, plans on right <laughs> yes now i will say for the people that are listening to this uh later uh perhaps on the podcast you would have you would have had a chuckle if you had seen ron's the blood from ron's face drain from his face when i said the word strike because on the back of his wall he's got i'm giving bowling analogies here and he's got baseball over the world so strike's not a good thing in baseball strike is good in bowling bad in baseball right ron <laughs> It's on mute, so he can't Oops. even respond. It, yeah, I like bowling. I'm I'm actually very bad at it. Um, but behind me, that's everything for all sports. I'm a huge sports fan. So I got Beautiful. little Joe Lewis here. I got a Hank Aaron there. I've got some lacrosse. I got some football. I got some race car driving. All of it. 
Yes. So we'll we'll use the we'll we'll be, go easy on the word strike yes. uh, for now. So strike's good in this conversation when you're knocking down the pins. Let's say that um, uh, any good, great system is knocking down a whole bunch of pins to make your life easier and make the lives of your clients easier. So uh, a comment here, uh, and Ian, maybe you can comment on this. Is I left the firm. Uh, last firm I founded because we were so heavily compliance based. I just felt that we could do better. And as CPAs, we should do better. What do you have to say about that, Ian? Absolutely. I'm in total agreement. I mean, I'm not a CPA, but yes, you know, the, the CPAs that I like working with the best are CPAs who understand compliance and, and hold that space, but are also willing to be the second voice in the chorus along with me of that's not enough right? It's, you, you got to be going for more as a business owner. And so both of us are supporting them being like, when are you paying yourself? <laughs> love it. Love it. So thank you for the question and comment and keep them coming. We will uh, do our best to tackle all of them. Um, there was a question about the book, The Profit First. We were talking about the book and someone asked, uh, is it available? Of course, it's available on Amazon and every single bookstore. You can order it from. Uh, and so make sure you get a copy. And we will have a little bit of a gift at the end uh, that I will mention. And we'll probably do something fun with that gift around Profit First as well. So keep uh, stay tuned for that. So now this the this episode was we, the title of it was how making your clients profitable first will drive more business for you. I'd love to hear some stories on how this new focus for you, Ian, and the, and what you're helping so many bookkeepers, accountants, and business coaches do, Ron, drive profit inside of business. How has this helped grow your own businesses? Well, I, I mean, I think that for me, it's the clear differentiator. You know, it, I'm finally able to charge for that thing that I was kind of testing the edges of before I really had this system that I could not only lean into myself, but show my clients. Um, you know, we get people who are looking specifically for profit first bookkeepers um, and get several leads a week just from that, which is fantastic. And then we can decide, are you a good fit for us? Or, you know, maybe we should send you to another professional. Um and I think it, you know, again, also in my own having put this into my business before I tried to sell it to my clients, having that extra profit in my business has really allowed me to take the time to do the things that I never had time to do before, like really work on the business. We're going through a huge staff development right now. And, you know, how do we encourage leadership communication with our staff and their clients and, and to me, that's just a, a, you know, a circle. The better we serve our clients, the more value we provide, the more that they're able to pay us, you know, and, and obviously the more profitable our clients are, the more they're able to pay us, which is also really nice. Mm. That, that's, that's hitting the nail on the head. And so <laughs> uh, one of the questions was, um, you know, many people out there, you know, they're suffering. They don't have profit. They're, they're barely paying themselves. They're doing everything they can to stay afloat, right? I'm not saying that these companies are going to be profitable overnight. I'm saying that you can introduce a framework to them that will help them get out of this systematically, right? And so, it, you know, one of the things are, if they're not profitable, we got to take a look at expenses. We got to take a look at margins. We got to take a product profit analysis, inventory control, efficiencies, inefficiencies. And those are the things that you consult your customers on that are more lucrative opportunities. Now, if you are working with customers that, you know, they're barely surviving. Well, at least you can give them a little bit of hope. At least you can sit down with them and introduce them to a cash flow system. And that one of the things is, is you can set up the framework. You can go to the banks and you can open up one bank account, right? What is, what is, what is the need, right? Do they got to pay down debt? Do they need to do that? And just start building that profit first muscle memory. Most businesses cannot start with those percentages in the book. They just can't. You can't take 20% out of an OPEX and carve it all around and call it profit. You just can't do that. And so, you know, if the business isn't profitable, if they have lots of loans, they're certainly not profitable. We have to come up with a plan and a strategy to help them. That's how you make more money. What is your plan and your strategy today to help those customers 
not only today, but tomorrow. When they remain your customers and you're looking to do a rate increase, chances are they're going to be a lot more apt to accepting that than I, there's nothing I can do for you. Sorry. You know, have, profit. Go ahead, sorry, Ian. Go ahead. I was going to say, I have two very different stories at, at opposite ends of that spectrum of not being profitable. One was a client that we are currently working with who came to us whose monthly debt payment was over $7,000. Like he was ready to, to sell his home. And I was like, no, that's your home. Like you've got it backwards. The business supports you, not the other way around. And within a year, we were able to eliminate his debt by making these changes. And so something like that is just an incredible feeling. But the opposite end of that spectrum is um, actually a woman who's a friend of mine who opened a cheese shop in Seattle and she, you know, was super struggling. And finally, I kept offering to work with her three years into it. She was opening a second location, like a wine bar with cheese to move more product. I looked at her financials and I was like, I don't see anywhere that you can cut back. This was pre-profit first for me, you know, but I essentially was having a, the same conversation without the same um, knowledge and structure as I do now, which essentially was, you're going out of business. Are you going mm -hmm. slow or are you going fast? Because you have an unsustainable business model. And she chose to keep trying it. And, you know, eventually she closed both businesses, went bankrupt, but not after working, you know, 80, 90 hour weeks, falling down and breaking her hip because she was so tired and stressed out. Like, and thankfully she had a very supportive partner who maintained some personal stability because she lost everything. And again, like... It, it doesn't have to be that way. It does and not so being, have to go that way. It does not have to go that way. percentages to say, it, this is not my opinion. This is fact. You're going out yeah. of business. Do you want to do it now yeah. or later? Uh, would have just helped with the emotional component immensely. Uh, and that there is what all of our listeners, watchers, for you, this is for you, is that's your part. That's your watch is to help people like that get the skills and the, and the things that you need in your business, both compliance and as well consulting and, and the eyeballs and the experience to be able to help someone like Ian's friend go, not have to go that way. Now, some people have to go that way. I will say that because that's part of their journey, right? right. And you couldn't do anything, right? You throw the, the life uh, preserver out there just like your friend did. She, you know, she, I believe she's in, in this life to get a lesson and she, and she did. Now, sometimes you can interrupt those lessons and, and uh, on the next one, perhaps. And so uh, that is what the job entails. And when we can do that, we can do more of that and make it go the other way. There's more jobs as we started out in this conversations. We've got thriving communities. We've got families that are not in strife and not in chaos. And we have, you know, that all just has a chaos theory through that, that takes things in a more positive approach. This has been absolutely fantastic. We are starting to run out of time. And I want to mention a few, a few things here uh, for our listeners, watchers. You've been so amazing with the, the questions. You're here. What that tells me about you, listener, you, watcher, is that you are someone who's committed to your own success in your business. You're committed to than helping others in their business. And so we want to reward that and thank you. And so I've written a book called The Successful Bookkeeper. Uh, we talk about it a lot on the podcast. It was really the genesis of the podcast that we started doing. It's a story of a bookkeeper who grew a fantastic bookkeeper, bookkeeping business of her dreams. And, how, and you can do the exact same thing. Build a business of your dreams. And I will tell you, helping business owners be more profitable should be a part of your dream or can be, and will be very profitable for you and your business. Uh, but we're going to give you this book for free, for listening, for showing up. Uh, uh, thank you to the Accounting and Finance Show USA. Uh, thank you to Profit First for coming and giving us so much generosity and, and you, Ian, uh, one of the, the people that are doing this work. And so if you want to take advantage of that uh, gift, I'm going to share my screen now. Uh, you can just go to the successfulbookkeeper.com forward slash gift and that'll be available for as long as the accounting and finance. So if you're watching this later on, you're, you're someone who wants to come and get the, your CPE and, and partake, not live, it is available to you. So don't have to think about, gee, can I get this too? Yes, if you're listening to this, if you're hearing this, 
it's available to you. And what I'm going to do as well, because I believe so much in Profit First, we love the Profit First. We've had so many great Profit First professionals on the podcast. They're so generous. They're such wonderful people. I mean, like attracts like, that I'm going to say, we're going to give away 10 Profit First books to those who download and get. So if you get the free book, I'm going to draw, I'm going to pick. It won't be legally binding. I won't have somebody there, you know, checking to make sure I pull the right <laughs> tickets out of the hat, but I'm going to give away 10 and I'll do it randomly, but we're going to get profit first for you. So get that done now. We'll send those books out to you as well. We'll get you 10 people. We'll get profit first. The successful bookkeeper is going to do that. And so uh, go ahead and do that. Now, just as we're ending, I want to ask one last question. I'd love to hear, please post in the chat. What is your fear about being able to do this type of work with your clients? Do you see, do you think that you have a barrier that is preventing you from being able to go and take this on? We'd love to hear that, wouldn't we, Ron and Ian? To be able to just sort of give people a couple of short thoughts on how your challenges, they may seem like big challenges, but we can help you find a way through that mountain pass to get you on to doing this work. So put those into the chat. If hopefully we'll have a little bit of time to tackle those. We may not, but uh, we'd love to hear them. Ian, Ron, uh, before any final thoughts before we, we wrap up? Yes. One of the things that is most important is being good at your core service offerings having your internal systems down, having your onboarding down, knowing how to deliver your bookkeeping services, your accounting services, get that those systems down pat, get your core service offerings down, then look to be more strategic in advisory services. Beautiful. Ian. I mean, I would say, um, you know, definitely consider becoming a profit first professional. I know Ron can't say that because <laughs> he probably but doesn't want to promote, but I can, <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I, to me, it was a game changer in my business, both again, personally, and in terms of the clients that we work with, um, you know, and, and the process of becoming is so well structured, the onboarding, the, the certification in profit first, you know, gave me all of the information practice confidence, you know, I mean, Ron and I jump on the phone and talk about pricing or, you know, my guide and I jump on the phone and role play a sales call that, that it's, it's such an intense level of support and help and getting you from point A to point B, because just like me and my clients, they understand that if I don't get this and if I'm not successful at it, that is a demerit for them. So, you know, if it's something you're considering, absolutely check it out. Yeah, um, it, it, it's it, beautiful. Enough. And it's tough. I mean, you know, there's some imposter syndrome. You're not an expert. Well, the, the way you get better is by practicing, practicing, yeah. practicing, practicing. And yeah. we do an awful lot of that here because we want to get it right. You do. You do. And so some, a couple of those com comments are coming and we're going to wrap up and they're going to put on the music. I'd love to get the, the music, pull us right off with the hook like they do in the Oscars. Uh, low confidence. Marketing is my biggest challenge. Don't feel like an expert. Being knowledge about your client's industry to advise them well. Okay, times wrap up. <laughs> there, I'm reading the, the prompter, right? <laughs> uh, so thank you, everyone. You don't need to do it alone. Uh, thank you, Ron. Thank you, Ian, for joining us. Thank you, the Accounting and Finance Show USA. We will wrap another episode of the Successful Bookkeeper podcast. Until next time, goodbye. Nice job. Well, that was a fun chat. Thank you again to the Accounting and Finance Show USA for having us as well. Thank you to Ron and Ian for their participation. And with that, we wrap another episode of the Successful Bookkeeper Podcast. To learn more about today's wonderful guests and to get access to all sorts of valuable free business building resources, you can go to thesuccessfulbookkeeper.com. Until next time, goodbye. You've been listening to The Successful Bookkeeper with Michael Palmer. For more information and to download the resources mentioned in this episode, please visit us at thesuccessfulbookkeeper.com. Thank you for listening.